In this chapter, we will be introducing you to a branch of mathematics called trigonometry. In this lesson, we will be using the primary trigonometric ratios to find angles. So, trigonometry can also be used to find the angles if you don't know it. Now, just for a moment here, I'm going to go back and I want to, I want to give you an idea here. So, for example, let's say I draw a triangle here. Now, this is really only going to make sense if you, if you saw the last video that I did. But let's say that I gave you a triangle here, and, and here's my angle, whoops, here's my angle theta, and I'm interested in knowing what that angle is. And let's just say that I happen to know that the sides here are 12, 16, and 20, okay? Well, I might look at this right away and recognize, hey, hey, here's, here's the angle. Remember, this is the hypotenuse. That's always going to be opposite the 90 degrees, but this side here is opposite the angle that I'm interested in, and this is my adjacent, whoops, adjacent here. Now, I notice that 16 over 12, really, that little ratio right there can be reduced to 4 over 3, if I divide both of those by 4. So because that ratio is the same as that triangle that I drew in that last lesson here, I know da, 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 that this angle here must be 53 degrees, okay? now. I know this because we drew a triangle uh, that was 3, 4, 5 in the last lesson and we knew that this was 53 degrees because I told you that. Um, and so now all I know is that if that ratio is the same as the ratio that we had from the other triangle, the angle must be the same. Well, we're going to do the same sort of thing here except we're going to let the calculator tell us what those ratios are supposed to be. Now, to do that, what we're going to do here is you press the second button prior to selecting the appropriate uh, trig function here. So in this particular question, the one that I just did here, okay, when I went opposite over adjacent here, that was the tan ratio. So to get the answer here, so we know, for example, that the tan of 53 degrees is 4 thirds. But let's say I don't know that. Let's say I don't know what the angle is. The tangent of theta is equal to 4 thirds, but I do know this. Well, what I can use is I can use the opposite feature or the opposite function to tangent on the four thirds. I use tangent on the angle, but to get the angle, I would do the opposite, the inverse of tangent on the four thirds, and that would give me the angle that I'm looking for. Okay, and so I can illustrate that right now. I'm just going to grab my calculator here, and now I've been playing with it since then, so I'm going to put it in the right mode. But if I now grab this calculator here and I press, okay, second uh, tangent and I do 4 divided by 3, yeah, there it goes. It spits out the 53 degrees, okay? So there we go. This is equal to 53 degrees. That's what they're referring to, to right here. So what we're going to do to start off with, we're just going to do some examples where we, we practice just using the calculator to do that. All right, so in these next few examples here, what we're going to do is use the calculator to get the angle indicated. So if the sine of an angle is equal to 0.792, so this is the ratio. This right here represents what I get when I take the opposite side and divide it by the hypotenuse. So when I, when I know the angle, okay, when I know the angle, the sine of that angle is this right here, but I don't know the angle. This is the number that I know. I know the ratio. So what I use here is that I use inverse sine, second sine of 0.792. That's the number that I have. I don't have that one. So now I go to my calculator. Second sine, okay, which is just above the, the sine button right there. Second sine, 0.792. Let me get 52.37 or 52 degrees, okay? So A is going to be 52 degrees. Normally, we're going to round angles to the nearest degree. Now, that's what it says in this problem, but that actually is a, a standard way of approaching that. For this one right here, the cosine of that angle, okay, if I knew what that angle was, th that cosine of that angle is going to be 0.866. So to get the angle theta, okay, if I don't know what the angle is, if I know what the ratio is, then I have to use second cosine, the opposite of cosine there. So second cosine, 0.866. Oh, and we get 30 degrees. In fact, it's really, really close to 30. It rounds really, really nicely. So 30 degrees. Okay, so if you knew that the ratio of those two, uh, the adjacent side 
to the hypotenuse was 0.866, then that angle right there in between those two would be 30 degrees. Tangent. Whoops. Sorry, I went too far. If the tangent of theta is equal to 1 eighth, find theta. Okay, same sort of thing. So this is the opposite divided by the adjacent. So to get theta by itself, I would do the inverse tangent of 1 over 8, the opposite of the tangent on that ratio. Okay, and so second tangent, 1 divided by 8. And we get 7.12, or just 7. Now, we're going to keep going with some of these examples here, but what I want to point out here is the mistake that often gets made here is that when, <clears throat> when people do this, they don't use the, opposite, the inverse tangent or the inverse sine or the inverse cosine on the ratio. They'll use just sine, cos, or tan, okay, without thinking about it. You, you really need to understand here that when you know the angle, when you know the angle, then it makes sense to use sine, cos, or tan. That will produce the ratio. If you don't know the angle, if, you, if you've got the ratio, then you have to do the opposite, okay, which is that feature that is just above the sine, cos, and tan on your calculator. Okay, let's just keep going here. The cosine of an angle is going to equal 1 over root 2. If I, if I knew what that angle was, I'd plug that in and I would get 1 over root 2. But I don't know what the angle is. So to get the angle, I use the second function, cosine, 1 over root 2. Okay. So second function, cosine, so get inverse cosine, whoops, 1 divided by the square root of 2. Whoops, that's right, 2. Oh, and you get it exactly 45 degrees. Okay, 45 degrees, good. That's an interesting one to know here. You're going to see that that plays an important role uh, in later courses here. Cosine of theta is equal to root 3 over 2. Okay, so the cosine of that angle would give me this answer, but I don't know what that angle is. So I have to use the inverse to get that angle there. And again, so it's second cosine, get the inverse cosine, and then the square root of 3 divided by 2. Now you've got to make sure that that square root doesn't go over the, the 2 as well. It's just root 3 over 2. In this case, we get a perfect little 30 degrees. Okay, and then finally, in this little set of questions here, if the tangent of theta is equal to 3 quarters, then what's uh, theta? So theta is going to be the inverse tangent of 3 quarters to go back to the angle. So second tangent, 3 quarters. And now we're going to have to round this one, but we're going to round that to 37 degrees. Okay, so there we go. That's how you use the calculator to go from a ratio back to the angle. Prior to this point here, we were focused on finding sides, and so you used sine, cos, and tan to convert an angle to a ratio, and then you use that ratio to get the sides. Now we're just going backwards. All of that information is in the calculator. Now we'll apply what we've just learned to triangles. Okay, so now to give a little procedure here. When you're given a diagram of a triangle, and you've got the angle in it. If you're given the angle, then you're trying to find the side here. Now there's a sentence missing here. However, if you are missing the angles, okay, if you're missing the angles, then you're being given the sides, then here are the steps that you need to sol uh, follow to solve for uh, the missing piece here, the missing angle. So first of all, you're going to label the triangle just like we did before. In this case though, you're not going to be given the angle. Now, now remember, the angle is the anchor point in these problems. It's always about the angle first. In the previous questions, when we were looking for sides here, that angle uh, that we were given was obvious, and then you just worked your way out from here. But here, it's going to be the unknown angle that's, that's the anchor point here. That's going to help us label the hypotenuse opposite and adjacent. You're going to see how that works in a second. Then what we're going to do is, based on that angle that we're looking for, we're going to determine which trig ratio we're going to use Okay, from using SOHCAHTOA, uh, just based on the information given to us. We're going to set up the ratio. We're going to have to probably cross, multiply, and divide, whatever we got to do there, uh, depending on, on how the information is given to us. And then we're going to solve for the angle by using the inverse trig function here. That's this, using the second key. Okay? So let's go through and do some examples so that you get a sense of how this works. 
All right, so these questions here, we're going to solve for the angle. So in this first question here, notice angle A has got this little mark on it. That's, it's drawing our attention to that. That's what we're looking for here. So here's the anchor point right here. Uh, remember the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. And because this side right here, the 14 is opposite angle A, that is the opposite angle. So here's the adjacent. But I have no information about the adjacent, nor am I being asked for the adjacent. That's not relevant. So I'm looking for my trig function that relates the opposite side to the hypotenuse, and that's going to be sine. So the sine of angle A is going to be the um, opposite 14 over 25. So what we're saying by this expression here is that if I knew what the angle was and I did the sine of that angle, I would get 14 over 25. I don't know that angle. This isn't an angle. 14 over 25 isn't an angle. It's a ratio here. So to get that angle, I will use the opposite of that function there, the inverse of uh, 14 over 25. Now I'll go to my calculator and we'll press second sine and then it'll be 14 divided by 25 to get 34 degrees. So angle A here is 34 degrees. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. So this one's labeled theta. So again, that's the one that we're interested in. Uh, that's where we're gonna put our, our focus. This side right here is opposite the right angle. So this is our hypotenuse. Um, this side right here that we're given, we're using it to build this angle. So this is, ah, why do I keep doing that? This is the adjacent side. And the one over here is the opposite side. I'm not given any information about the opposite. I'm also not being asked for anything about it, so that's really not relevant here. So now I gotta think what trig ratio on an angle relates the adjacent side to the hypotenuse? And the answer is it's cosine. The cosine of theta in this case would be 2.1 uh, over 4.2. If I knew what theta was, if I knew what that angle was, and I typed that in, cosine of that angle, I would get that same ratio, 2.1 over 4.2. But in this case, I don't. So I will use the opposite feature, the inverse cosine. Okay, so second cosine. Whoa, whoa, I went the wrong way completely here. Second cosine of 2.1 divided by 4.2. Actually, I'm just going to double check. That. Yeah, that's what it was. 2.1 over 4.2, press enter. 60 degrees. So theta in this case here is exactly 60 degrees. Good. In this next question, you can see right away, once again, we're drawing your attention to this angle right here, okay, which helps us label the sides. Again, the one that's opposite the right angle, that's the hypotenuse. But this side over here, it's on the opposite side of the triangle. This is the opposite side. This side right here is being used together with the hypotenuse. It's creating this angle, so this is adjacent. So now, I know the opposite, I know the adjacent. What trig ratio is that? Okay, well that's tangent. So we know that the tangent of A is gonna equal opposite over adjacent, 24 over 15. If I knew what the angle A was and I did tangent of A, that is the ratio that I would get but I don't know A, so it doesn't make sense to use tangent because I don't know the angle, so I'm going to use the opposite of tangent. 24 over 15, okay, so second tangent, 24 divided by 15, and we get 57.9, okay, so 57, sorry, yeah, 58. It's approximately 58 degrees, okay, good down here. Okay. Now, in this case, it's angle B that we're being our attention is being drawn to because of the marking there. Uh, and again, from there we identify the the sides by by whether the opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse again is opposite the right angle. Uh, the four here, the four point zero. This is opposite the angle B that we're being asked to find here. And then this is the adjacent side, but I, I'm not given any information about it, so it's really not relevant in this problem. So what I have to relate here are the opposite and the hypotenuse. Well, what trig function does that? 
Okay, well, it's sine. And again, you have to have that memorized. Okay, if you don't have that memorized, if you don't have like Sokotoa kind of clear in your head what it what it's used for, what it means, uh, this is going to be a very, very difficult process. You're going to have to constantly be looking that information up. But in this case right here, if you can see it, then the sine of B is going to equal 4.0 over 9.1. And I know I keep explaining it this way, but I'm, I'm doing this because <laughs> Repetition is important when you're, when you're learning this stuff here. If I knew what B was, if I knew what that angle was and I did the sine of B, I would get that ratio, okay, whatever that decimal value turns out to be. I don't know what it is, so it's going to be the opposite of sine, so 4.0, inverse sine of 4.0 over 9.1, so uh, second sine, 4.0 divided by 9.1, Whoops, 0.1, and we get 26 degrees, okay? So B is equal to basically 26 degrees, okay? Just a couple more here. So in this case, the angle theta, okay, or the label theta tells us that it's this angle here that we're interested in. Uh, again, the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. It's the longest side, but and in this case, I don't have any information about it. I'm not really interested in using it. This side right here, the 8.2, is being used together with the hypotenuse to make this angle, so this is the adjacent, and the 6.0 is opposite, is okay, the, the angle that I'm looking for. It's on the other side of the triangle. So I have got information about the opposite and the adjacent. What trig ratio is that? That's tangent. So the tangent of theta if I knew what theta was and I typed in the tangent of that angle, I would get the same ratio as 6.0 divided by 8.2. Okay, so now to get the angle, I will use the opposite of tangent, the second tangent, 6.0 over 8.2. Put the calculator here, second tangent, 6.0 divided by 8.2. 36 degrees. So our answer here is 36 degrees. One more time. Alpha, okay, because this is the labeled angle, that's the one that we're interested in. Okay, whoops, the hypotenuse is opposite the right angle, so our hypotenuse here is 60. Uh, this side right here, the 45, is being used to create that angle, so this is adjacent to that angle. And over here, this is opposite, and again, I have no information about it. So, what trig ratio that I know of uh, combines the adjacent side and the hypotenuse? Cosine. So the cosine of alpha is going to equal 45 divided by 60. And once again, I'll say it. If I knew what alpha was and I pressed the cosine of that, I would get the same ratio as this, 45 over 60. But I don't, so I use the opposite function here, the inverse function of cosine of 45 over 60 to get that angle. So it's the second cosine, 45 divided by 60, press enter, and we get 41 degrees. So alpha here is 41 degrees. All right, in this next question here, that's related to the ones that we've just been working on, but here a little bit less information is given to you. We're not drawing the triangle out per se, but we're giving you information about it. In triangle ABC, angle A is 90 degrees, so there it is in this diagram, A. And BC is 11.5, AB is is 2.7. Okay, so I have to label this here. So it doesn't really matter how I do this. So ABC, uh, AB is 2.7, okay. Uh, BC, okay, the hypotenuse here is 11.5. And I don't know anything about this side here. And the question's asking me, determine the value of B. Okay, so B is the angle that I'm interested in. So once I focus my attention on a particular angle, labeling the sides becomes pretty straightforward. Uh, the one opposite the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse. Uh, this side right here, because I'm using it to help build angle B, that's adjacent. And this one on the other side of the triangle, that is opposite. So now I have information about the adjacent, I have information about the hypotenuse. Now I have to know that that means the cosine ratio. 
if I knew what angle B was and I pressed the cosine of that angle, whatever it turned out to be, I would get the same number as dividing 2.7 by 11.5. But I don't know what that angle is. I need to figure out what that angle is, so I'm going to use the inverse cosine of that particular ratio, because in fact I do know the ratio here. Okay, pull out the calculator, second cosine. This is 2.7 divided by 11.5. And now I gotta just double check that, that I put that in correctly. Yeah, press enter. And we get that that angle B to the nearest degree is 76 degrees. Now we will discuss what it means to solve a right triangle. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at an, another idea here. Just something that's just a little bit of an extension beyond what we've been doing here. We're gonna talk about solving right angle triangles, okay? And what we mean by that. So now that you're able to determine which trigonometric ratio to use based on the information that you're given, and, and hopefully you've had enough practice to get comfortable with that, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the information to find all of the missing uh, sides and missing angles. So that's what we mean by solving a right triangle, is finding everything that you don't have, okay? So what we're gonna do here is you're going to label the sides of the triangle and, and angles and whatnot accordingly. And then you're going to find the missing angle uh, by knowing that all the angles add up to 180 degrees. So that's one thing you're going to do here if you have that much information, okay? Um, and then you're going to solve for the missing sides using the trig ratios. Or, okay, you're going to have to use um, the trigonometry to find the angle before you can find that missing side. You might even get the chance to use the Pythagorean theorem, okay, if you're given two sides and you want to find... Uh, you want to find the third side there, okay? In that case, you'd be missing an angle. So anyway, but that's the whole idea is you're going to, you're going to do the same things that we've been doing previously, but you're going to find everything now that you don't know, just not just one indicated uh, piece of the triangle. All right, so now what we're going to do for the next couple questions here is we're going to solve the triangles. Okay, we're being asked to solve the triangles here. So take a look at this triangle right here, okay? Notice that we're being given uh, the two sides here. Based on the way the triangle is labeled, this would be side little a, this would be side little b, so we've got little c over here. Little c we don't know. So let's start, let's start by dealing with that, okay? I know that if you've got a right angle triangle here and you know two sides, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure that out. So in this case here, it is the case that a squared plus b squared will equal c squared. A is 38, so 38 squared plus 29 squared is gonna equal C squared. Now I'm gonna to go to my calculator. 38 squared plus 29 squared, okay, is gonna be 2,285 is equal to C squared. And so now to get C, I'm gonna take the square root of that. And yeah, I was hoping that that would work out nicely. It really doesn't. I took the square root of 2,285 uh, it could be positive or negative of that based on like the algebra here, but the truth is it's going to be the positive one, and it turns out this is going to be 47.8 approximately. Okay, so C here is approximately 47.8. Now I gotta find the angles here. And so what I did do is I'm gonna just choose one of these ones to work with. Let's choose A to start off with. Once you've established what A is, Okay, we know that this side becomes the opposite side, this side becomes the adjacent side, and this one was always the hypotenuse. Okay, but opposite and adjacent are going to be relative to whatever angle you're interested in. So here's the one that I'm interested in. I have, at this point, determined this length of the hypotenuse, but in case I made a mistake here, I'm going to try to avoid using that as much as possible. So I'm really only going to focus on the opposite and the adjacent here. So what trig function relates those two sides? The answer is tangent. So the tangent of angle A is going to be 38 over 29. Now, if I knew what angle A was and I plugged that in, took the tangent of it, I would get 38 over 29, but I don't. So I'm going to use my inverse tangent, the opposite of tangent, okay, to get that angle. I'll go to my calculator here, and that will be the inverse tangent of 38 divided by 29. 
close bracket there. Okay, and I'm getting, when I round that, uh, 53 degrees. Okay, so 53 degrees. Now, to get B, okay, well, if I know that this is 53 degrees, the sum of the three angles in here has to be uh, 180. So B is going to be 180 minus 90 minus the right angle triangle minus the 53 degrees that I found for A, and I'm going to get that B is 37 degrees. And so now I've solved the triangle. I know that C is 47.8, angle A is 53 degrees, angle B is 37 degrees. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so in this triangle right here, I know this angle, and I know that this side is 19.8. Okay, this is angle T, this is uh, angle R here, so this is going to be little r, this will be little t. Now, okay, immediately I know that angle T, okay, is going to be 180 minus 90 minus 74 degrees, okay? Because the angles in the triangle have to add up to 180, so that tells me right away that, I mean, I know that angle T is going to be 16 degrees, okay? So that was the easy part. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the information that I'm given here to solve for the sides here. So I know that this is, this is the angle that I'm given. That's the one that I want to focus on to start off with. That makes this side the opposite. That makes this side the adjacent. And this, as always, is the hypotenuse. So now I have to find the adjacent side and the hypotenuse here. Uh, the only side that I've got here is the opposite side. So I don't know. Let's pick one of these things to start off with. Uh, let's start with the hypotenuse. So I want to figure out what the hypotenuse is. I know the opposite side. I'm looking for the hypotenuse. That trig ratio that relates those two is the sine. The sine of 74 degrees is going to equal 19.8 over r. So when I press the sine of 74 degrees, it's going to give me what that ratio of this side to this side is for all triangles that have a 74 degree in it. So I mean, I already know that that's going to be just a little number on the calculator when I, when I press it. I'm going to do that later when I need it. So right now I've got sine of 74 degrees over 1 is equal to 19.8 over r. I can, I can cross multiply, if you will, equals 19.8. So r is going to equal 19.8 over the sine of 74 degrees. Okay, now I'll go to my calculator and figure that out. So 19.8 divided by the sine. Now notice it's not second sine, it's just sine. Because I, I know what the angle is, it was 74. Okay, and when I press enter, I get 20.6. So the hypotenuse here is 20.6 units, whatever it is. Good. Now I'm gonna go back, I'm still missing the adjacent side here. Um, I, I don't want to use the hypotenuse in case I made a mistake. So I'm going to try to just stick with the information that was given. So I have the opposite side here. I'm looking for the adjacent. Opposite and adjacent, that's tangent. So the tangent of 74 degrees is going to equal the opposite over the adjacent, T. And same as before. If I press the tangent of 74 degrees, it's going to give me the ratio of this side to this side for any triangle that has a 74 degree angle in it. Because remember, that ratio will always be the same. And so I know that I can get that from my calculator. I'm just going to leave it. I'll deal with it in a bit here. Uh, first of all, I'll cross multiply. I'll make this a fraction. So I'll get t times the tangent of 74 degrees is going to equal 19.8. So T will equal 19.8 divided by the tangent of 74 degrees. Now I'll go to my calculator. Okay, uh, what was it? 19.8 divided by the tangent of 74. All right, and we're going to get 5.7 as the length of side T. Now, just to make sure that everything's kind of consistent here, notice that this was 16 uh, degrees here. Notice that this is 74. That means the side opposite the smallest angle should be the smallest side. Okay, and then that is in fact true. Okay, angle, sorry, side T was 5.7 and that is the smallest side by quite a bit. So that is consistent. Uh, I feel quite good about what we just did there.